Hi, my name is Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our Chainmail tutorial channel. Hey guys, big hi, hello, how are you? Really glad to see you here. Thanks so much for popping along and sharing your day with us. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to make another one of our projects from our um, Saturday Night as Mail Club subscription box. If you're interested in checking that subscription out, I'll leave the link down below for more information. This time we're going to be making our Vashti necklace, which uses the weaves Grizzly Persian and Full Persian 6-in-1. Now I aim this at an intermediate mailer, and um, because it's a little tricky, there's a Rivoli capture, there's all sorts of things going on. Let's just get into it, guys. So here's a sample piece of the Vashti necklace that we'll be making today. And the components you will need to complete this necklace in brown aluminium in 20 gauge AWG, which is 0.8 millimeter diameter wire. You will need ring I rings with ID of 4.5 millimeters, and you'll need approximately 126 of those. In 18 gauge AWG, which is 1.0 millimeter diameter wire, you'll need rings with a ring ID of 3.5 millimeters, and you'll need 42 of those. Also in 18 gauge AWG, 5.5 uh, millimeter ID rings, you'll need 124 of those rings. Um, in 14 gauge AWG, which is 1.6 millimeter diameter wire. You'll need ring IDs with five mils and you will need 20 of those. So that's for the necklace portion. For the Rivoli capture, you will need 18 gauge AWG, 1.0 millimeter diameter wire with 6.5 millimeter ID. You'll need 40 of those rings. You'll also need a Rivoli, this is a Swarovski Rivoli at 12 millimeters. You'll need some sort of charm to hang at the end. This is a double sided charm and you'll need some sort of lobster clasp to um, finish off your necklace with. You'll also need um, a twist tie, a piece of wire, something like that if you've got it handy. And for pliers, uh, two pairs of smooth jaw pliers. I'm using pliers from the Zuron range. This is the chisel nose plier, and this one is the short nose plier. Okay, we're going to start by creating the Rivoli capture with the grizzly flower first. So to do that, we want to do up a small chain of two, two in our 18 gauge 6.5 millimeter ID rings. So just make up that short chain now. Now these are a fairly high aspect ratio ring, so they can be a little difficult to get a nice closure on, um, but just work at it, you'll get there. Okay. All right, so we've got our little chain. This is where I'm going to take the twist tie and pop that through one end. Okay, so as I said, we're just going to make um, a grizzly flower which uses the grizzly Persian weave. So once we've got our chain like that, <clears throat> we're going to hold on to the uh, twist tie. We're going to flip back our end pair of rings so that we've got one sitting on each side. And we're going to keep on taking them all the way back and pinch them down against the twist tie so that it looks like this. Okay, then we're going to take up another open ring and we're going to feed that ring through those rings here that we just folded back, the ones that are sitting against the twist tie. So very carefully pick up just those rings on one side of your first pair, close that up. Okay, and then we're going to want to do the same on the other side there of our center pair of rings. So again, taking up another ring, 
feeding it through the two that we flipped backwards. Okay. And our work should look like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take up another one of our rings and we're going to feed that through those two rings that we just added. So the two rings on the outside, just like that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this ring down and we're going to feed it through the two rings below it. Okay, just like I would when I'm making Persian. Close that up. Okay. And we're going to do the same to the other side of our weave. So put a ring through the last pair of rings that we added. And then holding our work, bringing up the end, we're going to flip that ring down go to, through the pair of rings that are underneath and we're going to close that up. Okay, so our work is starting to look like this. We then want to take another pair of or another open ring and we want to feed it through not these rings here that are on the top but the rings that are on the next set of rings that are on the side there. So we just go straight through there and pick that up. Okay. And we do the same on the other side of our weave. Take up an open ring. And feed it through those two rings there on the side. And our work now should look like this. Okay, so our next step is to take up another ring. I'm just going to fix that join up, it's a bit dodgy. Take up another open ring, feed it through those two rings there on the top that we just added. Now, before we close the ring, I'm going to bring my work up a little bit so I can bring this ring down and feed it through the pair of rings that are directly below it. Okay, just like that. Close it up. Okay, and do the same on the other side of the weave. So again, taking an open ring, feeding it through those two top rings. But before I close that up, twisting that ring down and feeding it through the pair of rings that lie directly below. Okay, through those rings just there. And we close that up. So we just keep repeating those steps until we've reached a total of nine sections of weave. And by nine sections of weave, this has got three. Okay, so we've got one, two, three. So we want to keep going until we can count nine of those sections of rings. So you go ahead now and keep adding rings until you've got those sections and I will tell you what we're going to do next. Okay, so I've completed my piece of weave and I've got nine sections in place. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take up the Rivoli and we want to close this around. Now you'll see that the weave bends in one direction doesn't bend this way. So bend it in that direction and what we're going to do is we're going to take the Rivoli and just slip it inside, okay? So that it nestles in the weave there. So you've got rings there on the back and you've got rings on the front there. Okay, and what we need to do now is place some rings in here to join all this up. So this is a little bit tricky, so I'll try and make this as clear for you as I can. So taking up an open ring, we want to put these center rings in first, and we want to maintain the pattern that's already in place. 
So on this side over here, you can see that the top of the ring fits inside the previous ring. So we want to keep that in place. And then over here, the top of the ring sits on the outside. So we need to keep all of that in mind as we place our rings. So with this one here, I'm going to go through the middle here, but then I'm going to want this ring to actually sit on the outside of the other side there. Okay, so that we're maintaining that pattern with our center rings. Okay, so once I'm happy with that, I'm going to close that ring up. And I'm going to want to place the other center ring. So again, I'm going to want to put it here in the middle of these rings over here, but I'm going to want to sit it on the outside of this ring that's here. Okay, so through the center, but when I bring it around to the other side, I want to make sure it sits on the outside of the ring that's already in place. Okay, so you can see that we're maintaining the pattern there. Close that ring up. Okay, so our work should look like this. Now we need to place two more rings, one on either side of the weave, in the same pattern that these flat rings are in. Okay, so to do that, I like to, in this case, just turn it over. I find it easier for the first ring to um, be the one that lies on top here. So you can see that our flat ring here, we've got a couple of things we've got to keep an eye on. Our new ring needs to lie on top of the previous ring there. And we need to follow this pattern, okay? And we can see that this pattern goes through the two previous rings on the top. And then on the other side, it needs to come between these rings, these two flat rings. And it also needs to go between all four of these rings here. Okay, so I'll do that in steps for you. We're going to do this side first. So this side is layering it on top of this ring here and going straight through just those two rings there. Okay, and then we're going to bring it around. And on this side, you can see that this flat ring here actually sits under the one before it. So we need to make our new one sit underneath the ring. So that's easy, we just pop it in under there. But we also need it to go through all four of our center rings. Okay, so make sure as you're feeding it through, that you pick up all four of those center rings. And then as you bring it up, as you keep feeding your ring, and this might take a little bit to get, so don't give up on it, just persevere. And you continue to feed that ring and you can see it comes up through the middle here. Okay, so we need to make sure before we shut it up that we're maintaining all the pattern. So on this side, we've got this ring sits on top, this ring sits on top, this ring sits on top. They all go through just the two rings there, so that's great. On the other side, we've got the rings sitting inside each other, so we can see that we've managed to do that. And they also go through all four of these center rings, which we've done. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to call that placed correctly. So I'm going to go in there and close that up. Okay, so your work should look like this. Now I'm going to go back, flip it to the other side. And on this side, we're going to need to place a ring just here. And keeping it in pattern, you can see that this time, I need to go between the two flat rings I need to pick up these four rings. So what I did last previously, I'm going to do first this time. 
So I go straight through there, making sure you pick up all of those four rings and that you come out underneath the flat ring that's already in place and then bring our work around and you just need to bring it straight around because this one goes on top of the previous ring and just through those two middle rings. Okay, if we look at this way, we can see that the ring is sitting in pattern, that it's matching all the rest and that it's in pattern when we look at the front here. So once we're happy with that, we can close that up. And there you go. There's your um, grizzly flower Rivoli capture. Okay, so once you've got your Rivoli captured, we're going to start working on the necklace. And the first thing I'm going to do is just to do the short piece down here that we attach the charm to. But you can do this in any order, but this is just the way I like to do it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take up our 18 gauge 5.5 millimeter ID rings this time. Going to open that up. And it doesn't matter which pair of rings you choose at this stage, just choose a pair of rings and feed your 18 gauge 5.5 ring through there, just like that. Close it up. And double it up. So basically what we're going to do here is a small section of graduated full Persian six in one. So we're just going to double that ring up there like that. Okay. We're going to add another two rings in our 5.5 mil rings to our chain. So another two rings in there. Okay. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to flip those rings back just like you were doing, you know, um, a Byzantine, flip them all the way back, hold them in place, taking up your 20 gauge 4.5 millimeter ID ring this time. We're going to come in here, we're going to scoop those two middle rings up, close that up, take another 4.5 millimeter ID ring, Feed it through the same space so that we've got two. Okay. And as we did before, we now want to make another, put another pair of rings through here. But before we close this up, we're going to bring our work around and we're going to feed those two rings through the rings that were below. Okay, just like that. You see that's going through the rings that we just added plus the rings that are below. We're going to close that up. And repeat that on the other side of our weave. So put it through those two top rings, swing our work up and then feed our ring through the two rings that are immediately below. Okay. This is a little tricky because you're using two different gauges in there. There we go. So we've got our short piece there of full Persian. We're just going to take Another one of our 20 gauge rings. We're going to come in and we're going to pick up not the endmost pair of rings, but the middle pair of rings just there. And then before we close this one up, we're going to pop our charm on. Now the charm I'm using is double sided. Um, so just use, you know, whatever sort of charm you've got and choose whichever side you like the best. I'm going to go with the less is best side. So I'm going to pop that on there. I'm going to close that up and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to put another ring in there okay so that it um, completes the pattern and makes it a stronger attachment
Okay. So that's what your work should look like now. And our next step is to start working on the actual uh, necklace piece. Okay, so we're going to start to create the necklace part of this, the part that goes around your, your neck. And to do this, we're going to count up three rings from where we've attached our charm. So just count out one, two, three. And in here, on this one here, we're going to put a pair of our 20 gauge 4.5 millimeter ID rings. So we're using the same size rings that we did for the uh, charm attachment. So the 4.5s and the um, 5.5 rings. So I put a pair of those on that pair of rings. And then we want to make up another pair of rings on here. So we've got a chain of two, two rings. So we're just going to be doing sections of full Persian six in one um, in the two ring sizes that we are using. So again, making sure we've got a chain of two, two, we're going to fold that back like we did before. And then we're going to come in and pick up these pair of rings just here with another one of our 4.5 rings. Close that up. Double that ring up. Okay. All right, so our work should look like this. We're going to take up another 4.5 ring put that through the two rings that you just added but again before closing bring your work around and feed that ring down through the pair of rings below okay just like that close it up repeat on the other side so taking up 4.5 going through the two rings that we added previously, bringing our work around so that we can then continue to feed our open ring through the pair of rings that are immediately below. Okay, so now you've got two sections of full Persian six in one and we're going to pop another section on. We're going to do this in sections of three. So again, taking an open ring, coming in and picking up not the top pair of rings, but the next set, the ones in the middle there. Close that up, add an additional ring so that we've got a pair of rings there now. Okay. And then you wanna take up another ring in the 4.5s, feed it through the pair of rings that we just added and then bringing that ring down so that you can continue to feed it through the pair of rings immediately below. Okay, close it up. And repeat on the other side. Okay. Now we've got three completed sections of full Persian in our 20 gauge 4.5. So what we're going to do now is take up our 14 gauge rings, the 1.6 millimeter diameter wire rings, and we're just going to feed that through that topmost pair of rings. Okay, I'm going to close this up. And then we're going to do another section of full Persian, or another three sections of full Persian six in one. This time though, in the 18 gauge rings. Okay, so we're just going to put a pair of the 5.5 millimeter ID rings in there. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got a pair of rings coming off the 14 gauge. And then we want to do a pair of rings through there. So we've got that starting chain of two, of two rings. Okay, so once you've done that, we're going to fold that last pair of rings all the way back so that we can then put our next attachment ring through there. Okay, straight through there like that. Close that ring up and repeat with a second ring. And then once you've got those two rings there, we're going to take up another ring in the same size. We're going to feed it through a pair of rings that we just added. But before we close, we're going to bring that ring down so that we can also feed it through the pair of rings directly below it. Close it up. And repeat on the other side of our work. Oh, sorry about that. Put it through the rings on the top. Bring them down so that you can feed it through the rings directly underneath. And close it up. So now we've got two sections of full Persian there. We want to put one more section in so that it matches our first piece. So through our second pair of rings, not our first pair in the chain, double that one up. Okay, once you've got that pair in place, take up another ring, feed it through there, but before you close it, Bring it down so that it goes through the pair of rings directly below it. Close that up. Okay. Turn your work to the other side and do the same on the other side. So go through the pair of rings on top. But before you close it, bring it down and take it through the pair of rings directly underneath. Okay. So that's it. We would then place a 14 gauge ring as we did previously through our endmost set of rings. Close that up. So continue adding sections like this all the way along until you've got five of each gauge um, sections in your necklace. Um, and you finish up doing that now and I'll meet you back here to show you what we will do next. Okay, so once you've got all of those sections added to your necklace, we want to finish off with a 14 gauge ring. So just feed that through as you have been and close that ring up. And now we're just going to do a short section of simple 2 2 2 chain using our um, 18 gauge 3.5 millimeter ID rings. Okay, so just make a simple chain starting off the end of the 14 gauge. And again, depending on your tastes, but um, I would suggest that you make this chain uh, 10 pairs long. So a total of 20 rings used. So just go ahead and make that short chain. Okay, so once you've got those 10 pairs of rings in place, take up a single ring, feed it through the end as you were before, but this time, before you close that ring, attach your lobster clasp and close that up. Okay, so that's one side of your necklace. Repeat that again on the other side. Okay, so that you've got a matching um, section on the other side. 
but when you're finishing up a course you won't need to put a clasp on the end just your single ring to close your clasp onto so again just with this one um, you can count across one two three and on the fourth one there start your second set of the, the chain to complete your necklace and there you go guys that's your completed Vashti necklace using grizzly Pers Persian and full Persian six in one weaves. Well, that's it guys. That's our tutorial today. I hope you really enjoyed it and that you love making the project. If you did like it, don't forget to give us a thumbs up here, share our video, uh, comment down below. Any questions you may have, uh, pop them in the section down below. And if you really did enjoy our video and you haven't already and you'd like to offer us some support, then subscribe to our channel, hit that bell while you're here so you get all the notifications when we upload some content. Don't forget to also check out our other videos that we've got. And last but not least, there's the link to our shop up here where you'll find all the components and tools that you'll need to make these and all our other uh, tutorials here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks again. Hope you enjoyed it and that I get to see you again sometime in the very near future. Bye now.